nice of you to drop in. And speaking of dropping in, check this out. This guy has jumped out of a plane and is gliding gently all the way down to the ground thanks to a parachute. Wow, oh, cool, eh? Hey, but here's a question. How does a parachute work, hmm? The wind grabs the kite sort of thing and it starts making you fly all the air pushing underneath the power suit for, makes you go up. The air goes and it brings you down safely. You just have to press the button. Hey, you know some good ideas there. But there's lots of cords attached here to the parachute, so maybe there's like this huge invisible bungee cord attached from the plane to the parachute, so it makes the parachute go down really slowly. Hmm, maybe not. See, what happens when something falls is that the higher it drops from, the faster it's going when it hits the ground. Like if someone was to drop something from about here, it would hit the ground pretty fast. But if they were to drop it from way up here, it would hit the ground really fast. Hey, this is my old school yearbook. Hey, this takes me back. The old school buildings, the old classrooms, the old school swimming sports. Ah yes, I wasn't a great swimmer, but if there was one thing I was good at, it was the wading races. Every time there was a wading race, I'd win easily. I was so good at wading that the teachers decided to let some of the other kids have a go at winning. So they told me I had to pull a big umbrella in the water behind me. It was much harder. Try as I might, I couldn't move through the water as fast. And I never won another wading race again. OK, so that didn't really happen, but it was a good way of showing you something called drag. When the water pushed into and around the umbrella, it created drag. And that's just a word to describe the way I was pulled back and slowed down as I was trying to move through the water. And you know, I suppose that would work for something moving through the air too. If something created enough drag, it would slow it down. Hey, which is maybe how a parachute works. Hey, I've made myself a parachute. When I say I've made myself a parachute, it's probably a bit small for me, but it is a parachute. I've made it out of really thin plastic. It's an old bin liner, and I've cut it into a circle, like so. Oh, and I've attached some fishing line around the edges too. I've just knotted it in place. And what I'll do is I'll just finish this one, but I'm using sellotape to stop the holes from stretching any further like so. I've also tied the eight ends of fishing line onto a paper clip to make Air Susie Model 1 Parachute. I think it's just about ready for testing. But first of all, we need to add some weight to it. So I'll attach myself. Oh no, 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 no. Ta-da! Oh, and I've made Model 2 as well. It's exactly the same, except it's just a bit smaller. The canopy's smaller. OK, let's put these babies to the test. OK, stand back. I'm about to launch Air Susie Model 1 Parachute. OK, parachutes away! <coughs> hey, cool, it worked. OK, Susie got a pretty rough landing, but the parachute caused enough drag that she got a nice slow drifting trip before she crashed. Cool. Hey, well, let's check out model number two. OK, stand back. Parachutes away! Ow! Ow. Now that had to hurt. Are you okay, Susie? Ooh. Well, I'll tell you what, 
This parachute didn't work. I don't think the canopy was big enough. It didn't create enough drag. Because the bigger the canopy, the more drag it creates. In fact, if you make a really huge canopy, it should make enough drag to slow even a person falling through the air. Hmm. You know, there's only one way to find out. Hi. Hey, this is Ken Rikihana. Hi. And we're at the Whanuapai Air Base. Now, Ken has jumped over 6,000 times. That's right, yep. So you know a thing or two about parachutes? A little bit. Oh, cool. Hey, well, I'm looking at this parachute here, and it looks like a huge rectangle. Um, well, it's a bit different from the parachute I made, which is round. Uh, it needs to be this big because it needs to, when it opens, uh, be able to slow down two people. Two people? Two people. It's uh, Here at Whanupai, we do tandem skydiving, and the parachutes are built uh, for two people. Oh, wow. OK, so that's why it's this big. Why isn't it round? Uh, the problem with the old round parachutes is that uh, you don't have a lot of control with them, they're not very steerable, whereas with these parachutes, the rectangular shape, you can basically dictate where you want to go. So. so you can steer them? You can steer them, yep. Where's the steering wheel? OK, no steering wheel, but uh, we have steering lines and steering toggles down there, and very simply, like driving a car, if you want to go right, you pull down on the right, if you want to go left, you pull down on the left, and when we come into land to make the landing softer, we pull down on both at the same time. I like the sound of that. <laughs> How hard is it to, to get to fly with one of these things? Not very hard at all. Would you like to try? Now? Yep. Really? OK, let's do it. OK. Ooh, it's getting exciting. OK, I'm strapped to Ken. Ken's strapped to the parachute. The plane's 12,000 feet above the ground and we're in an open doorway. It's now or never. Maybe it's never. No, it's now! Here we go! Wow, that jump out of the plane bit was really freaky. But this is another kind of freaky. And I'm falling really fast and I'm getting faster. But it's sort of hard to tell. I can hear the wind roaring around me and I can feel it blasting my face. The ground is so far away and it doesn't seem to be getting any closer. And talking of the ground, check out that view. Whoa, it's hard to believe we're falling at 200 kilometres an hour. That's twice as fast as cars are allowed on the open road. Now let's see. When the parachute opens, the air flowing into it and around it slows it down, creating drag and... Woo! Yeah, that really slowed us down, all right. Hey, look up there, and you'll see that the parachute canopy's open above us. It's doing its job. It's creating all that drag so we don't fall too fast. Now watch what happens when we pull on the steering line. It changes the shape of the parachute and makes it turn in the air. Cool, eh? Oh, all of a sudden the ground seems to be coming up faster, but Ken's got it sorted. Pulls on a couple of steering lines and... Whoo! We skid across the ground. So that is how a parachute works. And because it's so big, and because of its shape, the air that's pushing into it and around it slows it down. And it stops me and Ken from racing to the ground too fast. <sighs> now it's a bit bigger than this one here, and it's a slightly different shape, but it still works the same. Hey, why don't you try making your own parachute model? See how much weight it will carry, and test the different shapes too. If you'd like information about this program, or if you have questions you'd like answered, you can write to us at Susie's World, PO Box 34307, Birkenhead, Auckland, or head to the website www.susie.co.nz. Hey, well, I am still shaking because that was absolutely awesome. So I think I'm going to have a wee lie down and then I'm going to do it all again. So I want to say a huge thank you to the New Zealand Air Force and to Ken, the man. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Thank you, there. Enough drag. The bigger the... <laughs> to the New Zealand Air Force and to Ken. The man. Oh, I did the sun. <laughs> we'll never make a sky. Okay, no. <laughs> Once again.
This programme was brought to you by New Zealand On Air.